apply the Gram-Schmidt process to construct an orthonormal basis for the subspace W equal to the set spanned by the vectors vector x sub 1, vector x sub 2, vector x sub 3 of R3. So the first thing that we need to do here is find an orthogonal basis using the Gram-Schmidt process. And we are given the set of vectors vector x sub 1, vector x sub 2, and vector x sub 3. So to begin, we need to select one of the vectors in the set. So I'm going to go ahead and let vector v sub 1 be equal to vector x sub 1, which is the vector with components 2, negative 2, negative 2. So now, by the Gram-Schmidt process, we know that the next vector in the set, vector v sub 2, is equal to vector x sub 2 minus the projection of vector x sub 2 onto vector v sub 1. So here we go, plugging our given vectors in. We have vector v sub 2 is equal to that vector x sub 2, which is the vector with components 0, 3, 3. And this is minus the projection of vector x sub 2 onto vector v sub 1. So we have the dot product of the vector 2, negative 2, negative 2, dotted with vector x sub 2, 0, 3, 3. And this is all divided by the dot product of vector v sub 1 with itself. And remember, this is just a scalar multiple. This is all still multiplied by vector v sub 1. So let's compute these dot products. So we still have that vector x sub 2 in the front. And now this is minus. The dot product in the numerator is producing 0 minus 6 minus 6, all divided by 4 plus 4 plus 4, multiplied by vector v sub 1. So this is equal to the vector 0, 3, 3, minus, so notice in the numerator here that we have a negative 12 divided by a positive 12. So we have negative times a negative 1. So this is going to be plus vector v sub 1, which is the vector with components 2, negative 2, negative 2, which leaves us with the vector 2, 1, 1. Beautiful. So again, by the Gram-Schmidt process, we now know that vector v sub 3 is going to be equal to vector x sub 3 minus the projection of vector x sub 3 onto vector v sub 1 minus the projection of vector x sub 3 onto vector v sub 2. So here we go. We've got vector v sub 3 is equal to vector x sub 3, which is the vector with components. 3, 2, 4, minus, now this is the projection of vector x sub 3 onto vector v sub 1. So we have vector v sub 1, which is the vector with components 2, negative 2, negative 2, dotted with vector x sub 3. And now this is all divided by vector v sub 1 dotted with itself. And again, this is our scalar multiple, so this is all still multiplied by vector v sub 1 minus the projection of vector x sub 3 onto vector v sub 2. So we have vector v sub 2, which is the vector with components 2, 1, 1, dotted with vector x sub 3, 3, 2, 4, all divided by the dot product of vector v sub 2 with itself. And this big old scalar multiple is multiplied by vector v sub 2. Beautiful. So let's go ahead now and compute these dot products. So we're leaving that vector x sub 3 alone in the front, 3, 2, 4. Now looking at the numerator of our first dot product, we've got 6 minus 4 minus 8, all divided by... 4 plus 4 plus 4, multiplied by vector v sub 1, minus the dot product in the numerator is producing 6 plus 2 plus 4, all divided by 4 plus 1 plus 1, multiplied by vector v sub 2. So we are left here with 3, 2, 4. 
four minus. Now notice in the numerator, we've got a negative six by 12. And in the second ratio, we have 12 by six. Oh, how cute is that? So with this first expression, we have minus a minus one half. So this is plus one half times the vector v sub one, which is two, negative two, negative two. And then this will be minus two, multiplied by vector v sub two, which is two, one, one. So this is leaving us with the vector three, two, four. Distributing that scalar multiple of one half through, this becomes plus one, negative one, negative one. And last but not least, distributing the scalar multiple negative two through, we have the vector with components negative four, negative two, negative two. So grouping up or combining up those like terms, we are left with the vector with components zero, negative one, one. And we are officially ready to state that therefore, an orthogonal basis for R3 by the Graham-Schmidt process is the set of vectors 2, negative 2, negative 2, 2, 1, 1, and 0, negative 1, 1. But this is just an orthogonal basis for R3. Remember that the question asks us to find an orthonormal basis for R3. So while this is a beautiful set of orthogonal vectors, we want to take this one step further and normalize each vector in this orthogonal basis so that we attain unit vectors. So here we go. Our first vector, we'll call this vector q sub 1. And we're normalizing vector v sub 1. So this is going to be vector v sub 1 divided by the length of vector v sub 1. So I'm going to write vector v sub 1 in its component form as the vector 2, negative 2, negative 2. And dividing by its magnitude, this is the big old square root of 4 plus 4 plus 4. So we have the vector with components 2, negative 2, negative 2, divided by the square root of 12, which we can, of course, simplify. So I'm actually going to factor the scalar multiple 2 out of the vector. So this leaves us with 2 times the vector with components 1, negative 1, negative 1, divided by 2 times the square root of 3. And simplifying, we have a scalar multiple of 1 by the square root of 3, multiplied by the vector with components 1, negative 1, negative 1. And distributing that scalar multiple through, we are left with the vector with components 1 by the square root of 3, negative 1 by the square root of 3, negative 1 by the square root of 3. Beautiful! So now we want to go ahead and do the same thing for vector v sub 2. So we'll let this be vector q sub 2. And again, we're normalizing vector v sub 2. So that's vector v sub 2 by the length of vector v sub 2. So our vector v sub 2 is the vector with components 2, 1, 1, all divided by the magnitude, which is the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 1. And this can't be simplified, so we can rewrite our scalar multiple as 1 by the square root of 6, multiplied by the vector with components 2, 1, 1. And distributing our scalar multiple, we are left with the vector with components 2 by the square root of 6, 1 by the square root of 6, 1 by the square root of 6. And last but certainly not least, we need to normalize vector v sub 3. So we'll let this be vector q sub 3. And again, we are normalizing vector v sub 3. So that's vector v sub 3 by the magnitude of vector v sub 3. So vector v sub 3 is the vector with components 0, negative 1, 1. And divided by its magnitude, that's the square root of 1 plus 1. So our scalar multiple is 1 by the square root of 2, multiplied by the vector with components 0, negative 1, 1. And distributing that scalar multiple through, we are left with the beautiful final answer, 0 minus 1 by the square root of 2, 1 by the square root of 2. And so there you have it. 
an orthonormal basis for R3 is the set of vectors, vector Q sub 1, vector Q sub 2, and vector Q sub 3. So this is a set of orthogonal unit vectors, making this our beautiful final answer.